Hello my soccer universe. Well, I guess we all know that the Premier League title race is officially over and it's not that it comes now as a big surprise. I mean, we were all, unless you're um, favoring one team, but then from a neutral perspective, we were all hoping that Arsenal can pull through. I even think that the Premier League was hoping because they desperately needed another team to break in and not have constant champions. We, uh, You don't from a marketing perspective, you don't want the Premier League to become what the Serie A was uh, when Juventus was winning all, all the time. What was happening in, what well, is happening still in Germany, we may get a break there. Uh, but you know, another title for Man Manchester City doesn't make it a very competitive league. And you really were hoping that this year Arsenal can break in, but a month out and it doesn't seem very competitive. However, what's um, kind of competitive is still that Manchester City is chased for a triple which is really hard to see at the moment that they are not achieving that i think it's more like that um manchester city can only beat themselves going into the big title fight that we had uh now two days ago big title fight it was arsenal seemed so like a boxer uh, just stumbling across having taken a few blows and it was just the final blow that City nailed in there. But it's so weird because if you look at the table, it's still Arsenal ahead. However, with two games in hand. And normally you would say, well, it's better to have the points than not having them. But it is so we all have seen City just taking another step going away. Of the teams that potentially could and uh, threaten City in the future for the title. I think the one that I, I'm wearing is potentially in there, but it's also not a feel-good story because they have a similar uh, sudden wealth and it's not. I mean, Manchester City and Newcastle United were really cool teams when I grew up. Teams that you like to support. And now with their new financial might from uh, the Middle East, it all feels a little bit blah, to be honest. And so that's why Arsenal would have been such a great story, but Arsenal just don't have the depth of overall. Uh, it also kind of validates very much what Liverpool have been doing. Uh, again, yes, they also get their money from overseas, but it's a teeny bit more palatable in a way. And they, with a much thinner uh, squad, have been at two times really challenging man manchester city and the third time they actually won the title so that achievement has to be put in much much higher regard now because you see that arsenal who have been brilliant and honestly are going to a season that were very well in a different area you would have been able to win you the title but this near perfection that city have been showing and they had wobbles but at the moment they are heading into the next gear where you just cannot see them stumbling up and you cannot allow this. And Arsenal have now the first real wobble, but it is a long, prolonged one that is not enough to get a title. And this is a really, really, really tough challenge. Uh, and I can agree. I mean, City fans might disagree with me, but I, I agree that I think at the moment it's harder to win the Premier League for any team other than City than it is the Champions League, because there you have a head-to-head -head and there you just can roll it out. Um, at least we have the relegation battle where uh, Nottingham Forest and in a way Leicester made it really, really exciting. And suddenly, yes, there's one team that looks down and then another big name in Everton looking precariously in a bad position. But then you also have Leeds hanging, hanging around. Um, I think West Ham uh, and, and, and so on might get out of there. And then we have another team that might is also in really, really, really bad shape that you would not, not expect there and the way it's going. They are not scoring goals, they have tons of money, but they're not scoring goals. I'm talking, of course, of Chelsea, where, yes, 39 points, you always say 40 points is safe. No, theoretically not. I think it's still kind of safe, but if they continue this form, this could be a shock relegation that we will see. Um, but actually, when I want to go into it, I actually want to start at the FA Cup, which happened this past weekend. Uh, full disclaimer, I didn't see much. I mean, I was never going to watch City against Sheffield United because there was only one winner. It's a Riyad Mahrez hat-trick to see City go to another final and they have yet to concede a goal in the FA Cup. Uh, a little bit more exciting, at least from the outset, was uh, Brighton against uh, Manchester United. However... 
kind of ended in nil nil. Brighton didn't have the punch to get through the uh, the United defense, who just basically held out. I don't think it was a great game. However, there was an exciting penalty shootout that went to the seventh shooter where Solly Marsh misses, um, and then Lindelof converts. Uh, so yeah, we have a United, we have a, a City United final that I think is exciting for the first time ever in the FA Cup. So the title will go to Man Manchester. Another cup title going to Manchester. The uh, question is, will it be the red or will it be the blue half? And I have to say, uh, this is such a weird. This dominance of City is so weird that I actually find myself rooting for United, which ten years ago I never would. But I thought I'm, I, I would say that. But you always want to root for the underdog. So uh, interesting times for sure. But let's go in the Premier League. Um, I still owe you the six one. Destruction of Liverpool at Leeds United. Just when I ordered Leeds jersey from the Leeds store because they were really, really, really cheap. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Uh, it was 2-0 at the half. Hakpo and Salah, Sinistera pulls one, one, one back and then just Liverpool running right as they want to do. However, that's the one, one thing that Liverpool can on one day run right almost on any uh, opposition, but then on the next day they are not stay as a stable level, and this is what costs them and probably will mean that Liverpool will not end up in the Champions League. I really had high hopes on Friday for Arsenal to actually get a little bit of a mojo back against last place Southampton, a team that I've been saying has actually not been playing that badly. First minute they're already down through Al Alcaraz. Theo Volker doubles the lead in the 14th. However, Arsenal shows at least some fighting spirit. Martinelli pull, pull him back. Jaleta Tsar then gives the Southampton a three-goal lead. I have a two-lead goal by Udegaard and Saka. A 3-3 draw, which shows that there is still something in that Arsenal squad, but not getting that win. They lost three draws in, in a row. You lost all momentum in this title. If you would have won this, this one, you would have at least at least had a shout at that because then uh, you have to kind of force City a little bit with more and you could have got, yeah, if you get a draw out of the game at the Etihad, it will be fine. Nah, no, not happening. A really, really bad result for the title chase. Um, Leeds United losing 2-1 at Fulham. Okay, that was kind of expected. Uh, in the kind of hipster game, Brentford and Aston Villa play 1-1. Crystal Palace, Everton at 3-0-0. Leicester get a big win over Wolves 2-1, which basically gives them a little bit hope of surviving this Premier League campaign. Liverpool against Nottingham Forest, you know, just going from lead 6-1. Um, yes, you take three times the lead, but twice you e uh, you get equalizers. Uh, Diego Jota scoring the first two and then Salah getting the win winning goal with Williams and uh, Gibbs White getting equalized in between all goals coming in the second half, which must have been fun to watch, to be honest. Uh, Sunday then, uh, also, as I said, that was the second FA Cup final, brought two very lopsided results. Um, West Ham United, fresh off uh, advancing to the Conference League semi-final, beat Bournemouth away from home 4-0. That more or less should see West Ham being safe for uh, in, when, when it comes to, to relegation. It was already 3-0 at David Antonio Paquita and Declan Rice scoring for Niles, adding one in the second half. And then the destruction of Spurs. Uh, a Spurs team that is very inconsistent in every re regard. After 21 minutes, they were 5 nil down. That is just atrocious. Uh, and Stellini then was duly sacked afterwards. Players are refunding tickets for the fans, although I hear this is just a little too because you know the travel up to Newcastle is probably more expensive than the tickets. Uh, but yeah, um, absolute horror show by Spurs, who with that result basically they were. You thought that they're not playing great, but they were in contention for a top four spot with that. Top four for Spurs, not gonna, gonna happen. Uh, however, Harry Kane keeps on scoring there. And then on the past uh, week, midweek, Wolves 2 0 of Palace, maybe a very inconsequential result. Uh, it's uh, same as Villa against Fulham, although Villa is in contention for Europe because of that. Leeds Leicester 1 1 as a result that helps absolutely no one. And not Nottingham Forest beat Brighton, who are basically still reeling from the elimination in the FA Cup 3 1. And this is the result that neither one of the teams down there really wanted want, want to see. 
The eye catcher is that Brentford are now the power of West London going to a Chelsea winning 2 0. And Chelsea cannot even score. I mean, Chelsea is such a dumpster fire at the moment. And I don't know where the eye risk is going. I mean, I'm looking straight at the leadership of the club who is, has just been abject. I mean, you want owners to spend. But like United did a few years ago, where the owners were actually starting to spend, it needs to be with a little bit thought put there. Not because some team wants to get a certain player to look at the next Hawks Pro prospect and try to scupper that one. Have a plan. Maybe they have now a plan in place. Maybe it will go somewhere. The one thing I can say, Frank Lampard has now five losses in a row. I don't think a Frank Lampard... Uh, at least he should not get any Premier League job anytime soon. He has to earn his spurs somewhere else. So uh, that was a horror show. Uh, West Ham United, Liverpool. I think uh, Liverpool deserved that win, although there was a late penalty, penalty shot. The probably should have given there was also a side goal for West Ham. And Paketa gives it the lead. Uh, uh, Hakpo and Matip turn it around. Uh, and then we had the big one between City and Arsenal, which was no contest, honestly. Um, should have been an early penalty, penalty shot. De Bruyne, I mean, it was such a non cc to go a long ball that uh, basically Haaland with whole holder play puts into Kevin De Bruyne, who runs forward, and then a really nice whipped curling shot in, in the net. At first, I thought, could Ramsdale have done better? But the way the shot curls in, it's really, really hard to get that one. And then it was basically, can Arsenal go with a 1-0 into the break? Because they were hanging in the ropes. And uh, if Holland would have his shooting boots on, this could have been ugly at the half already. Then it's uh, John Stone's um, uh, header after free kick just in stoppage time. That was given first as an off offside, but in the end was not. Uh, that makes it 2-0. Ruben Dias then, I think, should have gotten sent, sent off. And once the Kevin De Bruyne makes it 3-0 again, nicely assisted by Haaland. Uh, there was only one winner. It was already at the half. It was such a domination of Arsenal. It was embarrassing to see, honestly. Um, and it's also a city team that can do a whole lot with very little possession suddenly. Which is something that is so un like It was really impressive to see. Honestly, um... You know, I'm not excited about City, but when you see them, what they can play, there's some really, really good stuff in there. It is just that it's so near to, to perfection. It doesn't allow for anything else to get in that I find myself more and more being rather bored by City. I want to see a little bit more. Holding pulls from back and then Haaland after he loses his uh, <laughs> thingy, back, back hair, open hair. Scores. I actually want, well, I want to play with open hair all, all, all the time. Maybe. Do you want to see me with open hair? Maybe I should do this now, like Holland. For the rest of the video, with open hair, I'm going to finish it. Holland is a phenomenon. The true phenomenon. Uh, and he could have had easily a hat trick there. Did not happen there. Uh, then yesterday evening, um, Everton is in trouble. Cal Callum Wilson gives Newcastle, who plays Saudi Arabia kids, uh, goal. If Calvert Lewin's equalizer would have counted, maybe there was something in there, but then in, in the end it's Newcastle running away with Joe Ellington, Wilson and Murphy scoring the other goals. McNeil just pulling one back. Uh, Bournemouth win the South Coast Derby, meaning that Southampton is basically done. And then we had a rather entertaining 2 2 between United and Spurs. Uh, United had a seemingly safe looking 2 uh, 0 lead with Spurs again. Now under Ryan Mace, not looking really at, at, at it. Jaden Sancho getting it early, and then Rashford makes a second. However, Spurs come out with a lot more energy. Pull one back through a very weird but great shot by Pedro uh, Porro. But right off of the kick of United go down and actually have a pretty big chance through Bruno Fernandes who hits the crossbar. However, then Spurs having quite a few chances, especially Eric Dyer missing a... He is free in front of goal, missing a big, big chance. You thought that Spurs is never going to get the equalizer. I think Son also uh, missing a quite a nice one that was assisted by Kane. But in the end, Son with a kind of a miss hit, but still it was there. Gets it to 2-2. Two, two. Spurs then thought, I thought maybe Spurs would pull him for the winner, but in the end it did not happen. And so, 
with all these games we have the standings. Arsenal is still on top. However, with two games less, you see it's 89% in City's favor at the moment. Also, Champions League also seems settled with Newcastle and Manchester United. Spurs really would have needed the win over United uh, to have a better say in there. Uh, Villa is in there. Liverpool has a game, game less. If they win it, they're already, already in fifth place, potentially top four I don't quite can, can see it and Brighton are now kind of falling a little bit by the wayside so uh, we gotta see how this is gonna pan out on the bottom as I said I think West Ham is secure but then it's still very much uh, very open with teams getting their occasional wins and then seeming safe and then it goes the other way I think it's safe to say Southampton are gone but then between Leicester, Leeds and uh, Forest and Everton, it is really, really, really tight and it will come down to form. I fear for Everton, to be honest. And I think Everton will be one of those going, going down. Then um, pick one between Leeds, Nottingham and Leicester. Collection wise, I would like now that I have Leeds jerseys too, that, you know, or oh, they're coming at least that uh, they stay in there. But yeah, let's see. Um, expect standings. Forest are the ones still going down, but it's a very, very tight one with Leeds. Uh, Leicester probably having a little bit a chance, but let's see. On top, it's all clear. Uh, as we said, Liverpool is now in the fifth place, so they might play Europa League next season. Spurs may hang on to a sixth place, uh, seventh place. Gotta see. We have a few upcoming rounds. We have two full rounds and then a make make a game. And it's really that we have bang, 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 bang. So the next time you'll see me is probably uh, after this now long stretch where we have a game every, every day. It starts tomorrow uh, with uh, Palace against West Ham. Um, full and play at City. Uh, United against Aston Villa, I think, is a very interesting one on Sunday. We have, of course, Liverpool against Spurs. Um, you know, which always has some nice memories from uh, old times. And then uh, with Arsenal against Chelsea, where uh, our Arsenal might get back to winning ways, or can Chelsea do do, do something? Then uh, midweek, Liverpool against Fulham, City against West Ham, Brighton against Manchester United. We just had that in the FA Cup some of our finals, so we'll have it again. And then on the weekend, we get um, uh, another the weekend there thereafter another very stretchy goes well into Monday. Um, with, I have to say, I don't see now a big uh, standard figure. Maybe Liverpool against Brentford, Newcastle, Arsenal. Those seem to be the ones that uh, look quite interesting. That's it from me. Holland style with open hair. From what happened in the Premier League and in the FA Cup over the past week and a half. Uh, please let, let me know what you thought about uh, it's happening. Who do you think will get relegated? Who will make it top four? And in the else, we know who is going to get champions. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.